wrapping up a camping trip and I wanted to share with you guys the four items that I use and have been using for quite a while now that I love for my camping sleeping system. When I go, regardless if it's car camping, which is what we're doing today, or backcountry multi-day backpacking trips, these are the items that I've been taking with me and have had a good experience with, and I just wanna share them with you. Uh, emphasis being on lightweight capability and warmth, because here in the Rockies, we have really weird swings depending on the time of year and depending on altitude. I mean, it can get down to the 30s at night, even though it's like August. So I uh, just wanna share that with you guys, walk through the four items that I'm using and why I love them and help they help me to get the best night's sleep out on the trail. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I'm rocking. All right, so here's our layout. I'm really excited to show this to you. And as these are all compressed, and this is about as small as you can get this system, it's gonna take up between 10 and 12 liters. That's about the size in a pack. So when you're deciding maybe on purchasing a pack as well, how much is this entire system going to take up if you're gonna be backpacking ballpark, that's what it would fit in. You know, if I had like a 10 liter backpack, it would probably take up most of the room in it. So we're gonna go ahead and start and go from smallest to largest. The smallest part here is our Sea to Summit Arrows Pillow Premium Regular Size. You can see how compact that is, fits in the palm of my hand, weighs next to nothing, and I'll be running in a lot of the specs down below uh, here in the bar, uh, just so that I can make sure and get out everything properly laid out for you guys. But I love this, and I've had a couple different blow up pillows from Cocoon and a couple other ones. This is the first one that didn't slide around. When you blow it up and you put it in your sleeping bag, you know, uh, over the course of the night, it would. a lot of these other models would pop out of my sleeping bag and my head would be on the floor, I'd wake up and my head would be on the floor and the pillow would be above my head because they were kind of a slicker material. This has some cloth on it, so it kind of grabs your head or your beanie if you're wearing a beanie when you go to sleep, you know, depending on the weather. And uh, it's not gonna slide out as much and it's super comfortable, super, super comfortable. They do have different sizes. So if you are a much larger person, it would fit for that. You just need a lot more space on your pillow. This works fantastic for me in its size when it's all blown up and ready to go. But love this, M really helped my sleeping in my head with this pillow when I purchased this guy. And price, if I remember correctly, is gonna be in the $40 range, 40 to 50 bucks, depending on size and um, on the premium, the regular, all that type of stuff. So uh, you can just go ahead and check those out below in those links. So next up, this is a really cool concept, particularly for layering. And if you live in the Rockies or in just particular environments, you know about layering. You know, you've gotta have maybe um, a base layer that's a long sleeve shirt that's gonna wick away, and then you gotta have that medium layer, and then you gotta have that outer waterproof layer. This is kind of the concept with this design. Now this is the Sea to Summit, uh, and this is the Thermolite Reactor Extreme Mummy Bag Liner. I know there's a big mouthful there. They have a couple different weight classes, heat classes. Basically think of this as a sock. This is a sock that goes inside your sleeping bag to add and give you extra warmth and an extra layer. This one I decided to go with because in the Rockies, I mean, it can be August and we're backpacking and it can get down to like 38 degrees. And if you know anything about sleeping bags, the ratings that they give you are not always the most accurate when they give you the temperature ratings. I don't know who rates those and how they do it, but they're usually not accurate for me and my body type and I, type, and I tend to sleep cold. I, I tend to get cold at night and I want warmth. So what this gives me is the ability to carry a smaller, thinner sleeping bag that maybe isn't rated for quite the temperatures that I think I need, but it's gonna take up less space. It's an extra layer and it will give me extra warmth at usually a cheaper price as well and keep the this overall size of my bag down. So what this uh, works as is just basically a sleeve inside your sleeping bag, a sock inside your sleeping bag. This one is the extreme, so it's gonna add an extra 25 degrees is what they rate it as, and it's the most that they have. They have a couple different ones, like I said, I think one rates it to 15, another one to 20. But uh, 15 degrees, uh, or sorry, 25 degrees Fahrenheit, 14 degrees Celsius is what it's supposed to add to your um, uh, sleeping bag, it definitely works. I've used it several times on backpacking trips and camping, and it really helps out a lot. This stuff sack is three by five, so you know, really compact. I mean, you know, it gives a lot. Really nice, thin, breathable fabric. It is a polyester, and it's going to be 36 inches wide and 40, or excuse me, 84 inches long. So for me, being a larger guy, works fantastic. And it's going to come in uh, at a 14 ounce weight, so it's not going to add a ton of weight to my bag. But again, and I can move it and put it in a different part of my bag if I need to. And 
and just gives me the ability versus having like a sleeping bag that's double the size. I can have this in maybe one part of the bag. This can go in a different spot or, you know, just fits better. And again, I can take it out. If it was a really warm night, I'm not stuck in the super hot sleeping bag and just having to sleep on the outside. I can just not use it. Or if it was really warm out, you could really use this like in tropical environments and just give you uh, just a little bit of extra warmth that you may need without it being this you know massive sleeping bag. The price is going to come in at about 65 to 70 dollars. So you definitely have to consider is this the right system or is it better just to get the full size sleeping bag? I would say probably for car camping and that's all you do just go with a bigger sleeping bag size doesn't really matter that's going to be rated for a lower temperature um, but this is a great concept and again if it's just you're sleeping and doing lots of camping year round it just gives you versatility that just a one and done sleeping bag doesn't give give you next up this folks in my opinion is probably the best sleeping system just depends on your flavor uh, the climate insulated static v is what i'm rocking here but climate go check them out if you're looking for sleeping pads and you really want a good night's sleep i've been using all kinds of different ones over the years I've been backpacking quite a while now car camping with my dad doing all that type of stuff and gone from everything from foam you know just uh laid out you know pads to big blow up mattresses to everything in between and this really i believe regardless of your car camping or backpacking is the best way to go with these climate static v the they have the v lux um, they have lots of different options what i have here is the insulated static v now what they have here and what this offers you is a blow up sleeping pad it's going to come you know in this compact package uh, it does come with a repair kit, which is awesome. Some of these blow-up mattresses do not come with repair kits. It comes with the goo, with the padding, with the seal, everything. So if you ever puncture this on the trail, you can patch it and you can keep going and have a great night's sleep and you're not out of luck. Now the V is their kind of, I don't know if it's patented, but their system on how it's supposed to contour, trap the amount of air and contour to your body. And I can tell you again, it's the most comfortable amount of sleep. When we started using these about three or four years ago, when I first got my very first one, um, that was just the normal uh, version that, and we'll talk about the insulated versus normal here in just a second. Uh, it, it was mind blowing. I blew it up, laid it on the floor and I was like, this is like almost my bed, like how comfortable this thing is and how it traps the air, none of my hip bones. And I like to sleep on my side, I'm a side sleeper which is not usually great for backpacking because then you got all these pressure points and you wake up in the morning super sore and stiff and that's how it used to be. Now I do not wake up sore and stiff because it keeps my body off the ground. And I'm a big guy at 6'2 and about 200 pounds. I mean, you know, that's a lot of weight on these um, pressure points on my hips and my knees and my ankles and my shoulder. But this is able to support me and not cause me to have a horrible night's sleep on the trail, but a great night's sleep. Now they have a couple different sizes originally and they do have a large size which is 74 inches i believe for those of you who are larger now at 6'2 uh, i have you know a couple inches hanging off the bottom but uh, i i found that for me because i'm a side sleeper it doesn't really matter i tend to sleep on my side so it's not a big deal and my feet don't really hang off the end uh, this is going to be 23 inches wide and then it's two and a half inches high which is great it's going to give you that really thick feel now there is the Lux version which means I believe they're 26 or 28 inches wide. So they're much wider again for bigger or larger people or you just move around a lot. And I believe they're three inches uh, thick, which is great for those of you who are just bigger and just want that extra support. They are gonna obviously take up more space and they are heavier and they cost more. This guy is gonna run in at 25 ounces. So basically like a, a pound and a half, just slide, uh, just over a pound and a half, but it's worth that pound and a half for me. And finally to the insulated version. Now, originally I had just gotten a normal version that is not insulated and I was cold a lot, particularly on those mountain peaks when we're doing 14ers and hiking high up and you're camping at 10,000 or 11,000 feet at tree line and those type of things. It just wasn't, um, I, I, I was always cold. And that's part of the reason why I got the liner here and, and the, the um, it's the, uh, um, what's it called? Thermalite. So what I decided to do, because my brother bought a uh, insulated one for his wife and he took it up uh, camping and he was like, dude, this thing is mind blowing. I'm like in my shorts in here and not having to wear like long underwear and beanie and all this stuff. This thing is awesome. You need to get yourself an insulated one. So I went out, got an insulated one on our camping trip. I was so warm. I did not wear a beanie and I did not have to wear long, long pants for the first time in my life, which was just mind blowing when I have been out camping in the Rocky Mountains. It's always so cold at night. This for the first time gave me that extra insulation and warmth 
to be able to enjoy a good night's sleep. Now, if, if uh, it doesn't get super cold where you camp and maybe you know you just sleep really hot or whatever it is, you don't need to go with the insulated version. You'll still get all the com comfort out of the non-insulated versions. But if you tend to sleep colder or you just want that extra warmth, trust me, the insulated version definitely helps with the comfort at night and keeping you much warmer than the non-insulated versions. And the Luxes fly all over the place, price point. I'm just gonna run in a couple down below. Again, links below for all this stuff that you're seeing here. I think I bought this on Amazon for like 70, 80 bucks um, in the winter time. So, I mean, it may fluctuate. I've seen them anywhere from like 60 to 100. It just depends on size, weight, insulated, non-insulated, uh, Lux, non-Lux. So, but for around $100 or less, you're gonna get the best night's sleep, I believe, You'll, you could ever have on the trail and the best night's sleep I've ever had on the trail with these guys. So last summer I dove into a new sleeping bag and it is the Marmot Nano Wave 35 and I love it. This is rated for 35 degrees, obviously. Uh, again, like I said earlier, uh, I don't know who rates that stuff, but I don't believe that because I was in uh, 38 degrees and I was freezing before I started using this guy uh, and I was using this sock. So um, it, it, it at those levels, I would rate this more around like 40 degrees is probably what I would say. But uh, the reason that I went with this is one, super compact. I think it cost me 80 bucks uh, so that, you know, they have a lot of different um, uh, um, temperature ratings. You can get it, I believe they have a 40, a 45, and a 55 even. So depending on where you live in the world and in the States, you may determine what you want. Uh, and obviously the, the lighter the temperature or, you know, the, the warmer it's rated for, then uh, the cheaper it is. So 45 degree ones are not only gonna weigh less, but they're also gonna cost less um, and so on. So they do have two different sizes as well. Me being a bigger guy, I went with the large size. Comes with a great stuff sack, again, making it really compact. I love the weight too, 38 ounces, super awesome for that. Totally, totally dig that aspect as well. And uh, it's a synthetic, you know, it's not a, a natural down or anything, but it's not clammy. And it's just really lightweight, feels really good to the touch, and it's just a great sleeping bag to have. I have slept with it now. Uh, the last camping trip where we're filming all this stuff, uh, I had this guy, did not need the sock, and was rocking this. We were at lower altitudes than when we were backpacking, and we were at about 9,000 feet, and it worked fantastic, and I didn't even have to have my long underwear on. Obviously, if I was up around 10 or 11 or 12, I would definitely be rocking this guy inside here, but uh, this worked great just with this insulated um, uh, mat. So totally dig this setup, very awesome and really lightweight and compact. So you backpackers especially are gonna dig this, but car camping as well. I can car camp with it, is my go-to car camping one. And then my wife has our much heavier um, downed larger one with the insulated mat for her um, when we go car camping because she gets way colder than I do and I get cold. So love the Marmot. Again, links below for this guy and totally dig the Nano Wave and the Nano Wave series, just depending on where you live. I think you'll totally get a lot of use out of it. So folks, there it is for you. Thank you so much for coming over today, checking this out. I really hope this video helps you out when you are de deciding on what gear to purchase, particularly when you're looking to cut down on the ounces and you wanna stay as warm as possible. So thank you so much for coming over here. Check us out on all the relevant social media as well. That's a great way to see what's up and coming. Please subscribe, comment, like, share this video. I'll answer any questions that you guys have in the comments below. And always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.